Puss in Boots The Last Wish comes to us 11 years after the original spinoff of the Shrek franchise. In this film, Puss in Boots discovers that his passion for adventure has taken its toll. He has burned through eight of his nine lives. So he sets out on an epic journey to find the mythical last wish and restore his nine lives. The truth is, I had no desire to see Puss in Boots The Last Wish. In fact, it was so low on my priority list that I had a screener for this movie like weeks ago sent to me and I just didn't even watch it. Then I had some free time tonight and I decided I wasn't even gonna watch the screener. I actually went to the theater to see it because if I could see it on a big screen, I'd like to. I really can't stress enough how much I didn't care to see this movie. It was just a nothing movie to me and I, I feel bad that I immediately was so dismissive of it. But I'm very busy right now. I'm in post-production on Shelby Oaks, and I'm a father, and there's just a lot going on, and I've been very careful about which videos I choose to make the past few months because of the time crunch that is my life. I try really hard to focus on movies that I know I really want to talk about or that you guys would really like to hear me talk about, and I don't always spend an entire day on a movie that I just am not really looking forward to seeing all that much. The fact that I'm even making this video should communicate to you how good I thought this movie was. I am shocked at how much I loved Puss in Boots The Last Wish. This film is one of my favorite movies of the whole year. I can't believe I'm saying that. I think it's one of the best animated films I've seen in like a decade. I feel right now the way I felt after I saw the Lego movie or Spider-Verse, which also are two films that I went into with very low expectations and they surprised the hell out of me. This film is so much better than the first film, which I also enjoyed, but like it, it is staggeringly better in, in every conceivable way. Of course, the animation is obviously better. They've had over a decade to improve it, but they flip between different styles. Sometimes it looks like the classic 3D style that you saw in the original Puss in Boots, but also it will look like Spider-Verse or the bad guys. It's kind of like an interesting mashup between 2D and 3D, and it's really gorgeous. It's directed pristinely by Joel Cross. Crawford, the filmmaker behind The Croods 2, and it's edited very well too. There's an incredible opening musical number that sets up the arrogance of Puss in Boots and where he's at, and he doesn't realize he's about to be on his last life. And the whole film is this takedown of his character. And I think that's one of the reasons it works so well. He's forced to observe his own arrogance constantly in a scene where he actually is visited by his former lives, in fact. He's able to look at them and be like, wow, I'm, I'm kind of a terrible person. And it's like this beautiful moment, and I never expected Puss in Boots 2 to be so introspective and mature and extremely adult and also scary. There's a villain in this movie that's a wolf with red eyes that is one of the coolest animated villains I've seen since Scar. I mean that, from his first scene, Everything about him, the way he fights, his whistle, the eyes, the demeanor, his vocal performance, it's such a cool villain. I honestly was like getting goosebumps at his presentation and the way they handled that character throughout the movie as this thing that was stalking Puss in Boots everywhere. It was honestly brilliant. There's also this great device in the movie with this map that's supposed to lead people to the location where you can make this mythical wish. And so many different fairy tale characters are all converging on this spot to try to get their wish. And whenever you touch the map, it creates a obstacle course based off of your life and your emotions. And you're able to learn something from every single character when they touch the map about them and how they view life. And they're also able to look at themselves and whether or not the map was easy or hard. The way the writers use that map is visually fun for the movie itself and the eye candy that it creates, but it's also a tool for understanding the characters better. Antonio Banderas and Selma Hayek both give really good vocal performances in the movie and both of the characters they play have a past as well that felt very Western, a little bit Kill Bill, and the movie itself felt kind of like the good and the bad and the ugly. There's even a direct tribute to the famous standoff scene. 
I can't tell you how much care they really did put into this movie. This could have just been a cash grab sequel many years later to cash in on the name, maybe get some kids to go see it. But DreamWorks went above and beyond on this. Like this feels like old DreamWorks animation. Like the first time I saw How to Train Your Dragon or even the original Shrek where it just felt like, oh, like this is competition for Pixar right now. This is really, really monumental. Obviously, I love this movie and I think you all should go see it if you missed it because of the winter storm or because like me, you were just like, whatever. It's great. Go watch it. It deserves your money. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.